I tried 12 different types of cowboy boots in 2023 over an extended period of time, so that's pretty much one per month, and it all comes down to this video. We gotta rank them from worst to first. So let's get into it. I'm just here to connect ya, and then I'll be on my way. Hey everybody, my name is Jeremiah Craig. Welcome back to the channel. If this is your first time here, please subscribe and always like and comment down below. I'm a cowboy boot enthusiast and I've had this YouTube channel for about four or five years now. So this is the fourth year where I am ranking all of the boots that I had the chance to test over an extended period of time. Now you guys can see those extended test reviews. You can see me put them to work and do different types of adventures in these boots, but I always like to report on them again at the end of the year so that you can see how they held up. I've made my own scoring system with different categories, so this isn't just a video of me saying these boots are awesome or these boots are just garbage, although you will get some of that. I've broken it down to five different categories that are scored from one to five, one being the lowest and five being the absolute best. The first category is the modern made to traditionally made score. The more modern made it is the lower the score and I just think traditionally made boots are better so that's why the traditionally made boots get a higher score if you want to see more about this scale I made a video about it you can see it up here or at the link in the description the next category I made is value basically what you get for the cost the higher the score you get more for the price of the boots the next category is size and basically this is all of the different width sizes that a brand offers for that particular boot. So width sizes could be average D and double E, which is what most brands release, but there's everything from A to double E and more. So the more width sizes a brand has, the better the score with five being the most. Then I have the design category, which is how the boot looks and functions based off of its design elements, both internally and externally. And finally, I have the spiritual experience category, which is how I felt when wearing the boot. If you wanna see more about this divine feeling that is unique to cowboy boots, check it out at the link above or in the description. It's one of the first videos I made for this channel. Let me drop a quick shameless plug for my merch like this cool shirt and more over at jeremiahcraig.com slash store. It's a great way to support this channel. Now let's get to the boot ranking from worst to first. I actually have a tie for last Thursday boots. This is the Desperado. Now I hated these boots and they made me physically angry every time I wore them. The build is similar to other direct-to-consumer brands made in Leon, Mexico, and so is the design. They basically copied the cording trend that was popular two years ago and they released this boot without any width sizes stated. So you would go to their website and just order an 11. Well, is it an 11D? Is it 11 double E? They didn't think about how the Western industry sizes cowboy boots before releasing them. Their one width ended up being a D width, but it still fits like crap. Thursday is trying to capitalize on cowboy boots being more popular, but they didn't add anything new to their designs and released this purely for money and not to actually release a good cowboy boot. And that's why this boot comes in last. And tied for last with those Thursday boots are these Durango Rebel boots. This is a cheaply modern made style boot with lots of composites and cloth. Even the American flag tops are made of polyurethane leather. So the only real leather on this boot is the foot, the pull straps, and the collar here. There's not even any leather on the inside. They have a standard D and double E width sizes, and it's fine for a cheap boot, but I'd still prefer Abilene or buying used boots on the secondhand marketplace. Coming in at number 10 is the Twisted X Tech X boot. Now there's three different types of Tech X boots and this is technically their traditional profile with leather outsole line of Tech X and it has a D and double E width size option. It uses a new method of comfort with what feels like added pillows of cushion in the footbed at the ball of the foot and at the heel. As it broke in over the year, this leather stretched out and also the insole on the inside flattened out a bit, which made those little impressions, those little pillows at the ball of the foot and at the heel become more apparent and it felt more lumpy than actual comfort. So I like the idea of how they designed the comfort in this boot, but I think it could benefit from maybe a better insole that doesn't flatten out so you could see a little bit less lumpy, more supportive feeling. And I also think that this could benefit from a hand lasting for the foot area so that it wouldn't stretch out as much as it broke in. 
Coming in at number nine is Escambia Boot Company. I tried two pairs of Escambia boots this year and found them to be a little inconsistent in sizing and quality. The deerskin pair that I tried were a bit small and had a wad of cork underneath the insole, which drove me crazy. On the other hand, the black cherry ostrich leg boots from Escambia fit great, had no QC issues, and they look great too. They have some modern construction elements, but they also allowed customers the option of designing their own boots for special orders. But it sounds like they're gonna be rolling that back here in 2024. We got another tie in total points here at the eight and seven ranking. So here at eight is Clyde Boots. This new brand headquartered in Ohio released their first boot, the I Can Do All this year. And it has lots of traditional build elements, including a channeled Goodyear welt and a traditional hard leather insole. They only released this boot in a D and double E width, and I'm not the biggest fan of this cross design personally, and I would have loved to see a little bit better of a rubber outsole here, but for the most part, I think this is a great start for a new brand. Clyde Boots has a new brown boot with a round toe and leather outsole that's out now, and I look forward to trying that in 2024. And tied with Clyde Boots for total number of points are these R. Watson boots, but I'm giving it a size tiebreaker because this comes in b -widths and I loved that. This is the first boot on this list that has more than just two widths. This has my true size of a 12B, so it was a joy to wear right from the get-go. While I like the fit and feel of these boots, I feel like it comes up short on quality. There's wrinkles in the leather at the toe, which makes it kind of look like a pig nose. And while some will say this is a feature of it being handmade, it's not. Cutter toes should look crisp and clean right here. Other brands can do it, and custom boot makers do it all the time. And it's by hand. The stitching around the pull holes is becoming frayed, and this used to happen to my Hondo boots all the time until they started adding an extra stitch right in the middle. Plus, the heel cap is glued on with a pretty weak glue, and it uses no nails, so it started coming off within a couple of months, and I had to get new heel caps on from my local cobbler, which shouldn't happen within the first couple of months of wearing a boot. That said, this boot does have the thickest and strongest heel counter. There's extra reinforced material in here in addition to a leather heel counter so it won't budge at all. So with a few improvements and attention to detail, R. Watson could easily move up a couple of spots in future ranking videos. Coming in at number six are the Ariat Benchmade boots. This boot feels completely different from any Ariat that I've ever tried. It has more traditional construction elements, including a traditional hard leather insole underneath their leather-topped foam removable insole. The bison leather on this particular boot feels great. I just wish that they also had more width sizes than D and double E. This Ariat feels like it was made by a completely different brand altogether, and I'm really excited to see where they take this line. Coming in at number five, but tied with the Ariat Benchmade boots in total points are the Chisos number twos. Chisos boots made some updates to the construction of their boots, mainly with the shank because they had trouble with that squeaking in some previous models. The adjustments that they made didn't really fix the squeaking problem altogether because these did squeak brand new out of the box, but the squeak did stop after a couple of weeks of these wearing. So they just needed to break in and sort of settle, and then all squeaking in these boots went away. The insole in these is very unique, and I still haven't experienced anything quite like it. So this gets a comfort tiebreaker. Lots of comfort in this boot, lots of cushion for those of you on your feet all day, even on hard surfaces. I like the look and feel of this boot, but I also think that boots shouldn't squeak when they're brand new and out of the box. Still, it does go away when it's broken in. If they were able to fix the squeak and offer more sizes, I feel like it could move up in this ranking easily. All right, coming in at number four is Fenolio Boots. This is our first US made brand of the day and they will pretty much make every width size. So these full quill ostrich boots fit and feel amazing for me in my true size of a 12B. There are less traditionally made aspects of this boot, including a non-removable foam and leather insole, but for the most part, I love the look and the finish of this boot. There are no wrinkles in the leather on this wider cutter toe, and I think it would look a bit better with just a single stitch welt, but I'm still going to enjoy wearing these Fenolio boots on a regular basis. Coming in at number three are traditionally made slightly used boots from secondhand marketplaces. And my favorite one that I picked up this year is this Tony Llama boot, model number 6951. 
I picked up a few traditionally made used cowboy boots off of the secondhand market this year, and this was my favorite. These wingtips are incredible. There are tons of styles and sizes of slightly used cowboy boots out there made during the golden age of cowboy boots where nearly all of the classic brands made cowboy boots the right way. And this is one of the best routes to go if you're looking for unique sizes or designs for cowboy boots that you can't really find in the mainstream. And plus, what you get for the value is much better than a lot of the other boots in this list. You can get so much with just a budget of $100 when you look for slightly used cowboy boots on these secondhand marketplaces. They may not feel as incredible as a brand new pair of boots, but that's easy to live with thanks to the price that you get and the fact that they will break in to a new customer over the course of just a couple months. I bought this pair from Shop Goodwill with a bid of $66 and after shipping and handling, it came out to around $93. And it looks incredible. It still has the original outsole and heel cap as well. You can't go wrong with the secondhand market, guys, especially if you know what you're looking for. And coming in at number two, but ties number one in total number of points is the Ithaca boot from JW Boot Company. JW Boot Company stepped up their game in a big way this year with the release of their signature line. I tested out the Ithaca boot, which has five different width options, uses a great calfskin leather on the inside and the outside, and it fits amazing. I love the hourglass shape of this heel and just the profile of this boot in general. Doesn't it look great? I wore this boot more than any other in this list this year. I just kept coming back to it again and again. They were also some of your favorites on my Instagram with three out of nine of my most liked posts this year being these JW Boot Company Signature Line Ithaca Boot with all three of those receiving more than 800 likes each. With a boot like this in JW Boot Company's lineup, I'm really looking forward to what they do in 2024. And coming in at number one, tied with the most possible points a boot can get in this ranking, is this navy full quill ostrich boot from Botas Nueve Vizcaya. Botas Nueve Vizcaya, or BNV boots, made the prettiest and most unique boot that I tried all year long. Hailing from El Paso, Texas, BNV will make you whatever your heart desires, and they have tons of different size options. They can even make classic toe shapes like the J-toe, which is what these navy ostrich boots feature. Speaking of the navy blue ostrich, this is an amazing color and they're so soft. Plus the top design with the ostrich inlay is next level. So while I wore the JW Boot Company signature line boots more this year, I love the design of this one more. It's so beautiful and just as comfy to wear, but less of an everyday cowboy boot and more of something for special occasions. And that's my ranking for 2023. Do you agree with my picks? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments and you can also check out videos to each one of these boots in the description. Thank you so much for watching today. Don't forget to subscribe and I will see you next time. Peace. Another year, thanks for riding with me. That was my ranking for 2023. You might agree or maybe disagree. Just how I feel personally That was my boot ranking for 2023 <laughs> Thank you so much for watching today Why don't you check out this video up here A little bit more about cowboy boots Or I got a music video down here I think you might enjoy Don't forget to subscribe up here And I will see you next time Peace